There is a patch on the way and it changes a lot of what I taught you so far in FIFA 22. So lads, here is a breakdown of my thoughts as well as how we can adapt to this patch coming in FIFA 22. Griezmann, three men around him to somehow find some space. Ronaldo, fantastic, opening the drive back. He's made himself the tiniest bit of space. It almost feels like a bit of a toy. Didn't really go for him. Oh! It's a display there. absolutely ridiculous. The last on the goal line. I'm not going to go through every single pitch note. I'm going to go through the key ones and what I actually think will be the most game changing after this patch in FIFA 22. Driven passes are now more likely to be intercepted by players standing in the ball's travel path. We all know how overpowered driven passes are this year. There are ways of overcoming this and although it will hold us back in terms of how we attack and how fast we can progress up the pitch, there are other ways of actually attacking and overcoming coming this and it will just involve a few extra passes it might just involve tick tucker style passing and I've got a video coming out in the next couple of days of what we can use in alternate to the driven pass and actually building up our play in a fast fashion progressing up the pitch and counter attacking our opponent and the reason why the driven pass was so effective is because of how quick you could progress up the pitch and counter attack your opponent as well as find your strikers feet it might just take us a few extra passes instead of just that one pass, the one driven pass. So it might entail implementing ticker tacka style passing into our attack to actually build up and progress up the pitch in a fast fashion. I've actually got a video coming out in the next couple of days on how we can adapt and how we can attack and progress up the pitch in a fast fashion without using the driven pass or at least minimizing the use of the driven pass because the driven pass as it gets patched may not be as effective as it is now. Now. Having said that, a lot of the time EA attempt to patch something and they fail at doing so. I'm sure you guys recall FIFA 19 and the attempt to patch the La Croqueta. I mean, they couldn't. The whole gear it had. So lads, we're just going to have to wait and find out. Some dribbling animations triggered by moving the left stick which includes the ball carrier taking small touches to avoid a potential tackle will now only occur when the contextual agile dribbling setting is set to on. You guys all know that I've done a video on the competitive master switch glitch in the controller settings section. This patch may change everything. EA came out at the start of the year saying that in competitive game modes you need to play with competitive master switch setting on on which means contextual agile dribbling, auto clearances, auto flare pass, auto shots, assisted headers, all had to be set to off and jockey as well as defending had to be set to manual and tactical defending. But no, there was a glitch and EA literally came out and said, look, doesn't actually implement into the game. You actually are using whatever you have set when your settings is set to off on contextual agile dribbling when you are in the controller settings menu. So when you have competitive master switch set to off and you turn contextual agile dribbling on in game, no matter if competitive master switch is on or off, you will be playing with contextual agile dribbling. So EA are actually coming out and saying they are going to improve contextual agile dribbling when it is set to on. When there are a lot of people at the moment that do not know about this glitch. Which means all of you that do not know this glitch exists will be playing at a disadvantage because your opponent that does know that a glitch exists and has contextual agile dribbling set to on will have extra touches in the dribble, will have a lot more control on the left stick and will be able to weave in and out of tackles with that assistance on. If you have it set to off, you won't be dribbling as cleanly, you won't be taking as many touches around the defender, and you will be at a disadvantage. And this, in my opinion, is a problem with this patch. I've got a video out coming up in the next coming days on what you guys should do on your controller settings post patch. That is coming out, so be sure to watch out for that. But lads, it's an absolute game changer, and I cannot believe they're doing this. When defending across with auto switching settings set to automatic on air balls and loose balls or only air balls, an automatic player switch will occur slightly faster than before. Now, 
if they so much so as to make it harder the corner glitch to be executed where you pass it into the attacker just outside the 18 yard box and cross it in far post this may be the pitch node that actually prevents that corner technique from being executed and the reason being is because with the actual corner technique and the corner glitch the reason why it works so well is because you cannot select the back post defender quick enough and i find that is an issue because if you're going to right stick select the defender at the bat post, it literally takes a good six, seven or eight flits to get that bat post defender to then clear the ball. You don't have enough time to do that because the ball will already be in the air and being crossed in bat post. But with this assistance on, we may be able to just select that defender a lot quicker and it may auto switch us to that defender to then clear the ball. One thing I can say is for those of you who aren't the best at player switching, set this to on in your settings. As we know, as I just explained the glitch, it doesn't matter whether it's on or off in terms of the competitive master switch. If you set it to on, it will be in games. So in my opinion, if you're not the greatest at switching, please put this to on because it will enable you to select the correct defender to clear that ball quick enough before the attacker gets on the end of the ball. When playing matches with the defensive depth custom tactic slider set to 70 or above, defenders could unintentionally drop too deep in their own half. This is absolutely important because I've actually got a video coming out in the coming days on why you should not drop back in Fever 22. What I find is when your players are too deep, there's too much space in the 18 yard bots, which means the opponent does find it easier to pick out his attacker, turn and shoot shoot and I find lads when you're dropping back or when your defense is really deep it's an issue because it's easier to score against you and I think EA have done that on purpose I think it's a good thing really trust me I do because it prevents drop back it allows you to score a lot easier than in previous years if your opponent is dropping back and I think hopefully this patch will fix that issue and will be able to be up a lot more higher to prevent those easy goals from being scored against us Reduced shooting assistance when attempting a shot in situations where the goalkeeper is positioned closely to either one of their posts. Now this may just prevent those near post shots from going in. As we know and as I've taught you on the channel before, there is a sweet spot for the near post shot in the 18 yard bots where if your player is in that particular area and he shoots near post, it will go in the majority of the time. If they add this in, if this pitch note is correct and EA implement it correctly, I can see those near post shots not working. So we need to bear that that in mind when we are shooting near post. It may also prevent us from shooting far post if the player has moved the goalkeeper to that side. I find even if you move the goalkeeper with goalkeeper movement this year, it will still go in because the goalkeeper just for some reason dives to the ground. It's really, it's a really weird animation, but with this patch, it may prevent that from happening and goalkeepers may just be overpowered yet again. When playing matches with the defensive corner custom tactic slider to one or two bars, more players will now be positioned outside of the bots and at the halfway line. Now, if the third note there, when defending across with auto switching setting is set to automatic, if that does not help prevent the corner glitch, I think this may backfire in the patch and I think it actually may be easier for you to perform the back post corner technique. The reason why it is sometimes hard to perform is because you don't have enough players outside the 18 yard box to actually receive the ball and get into that position to cross it back post. When you set the bars to one or two though, EA are coming out and they're saying there's going to be more players positioned outside the 18 yard box. That means there's going to be more to receive the ball in that area and cross it far post to execute the corner technique. We'll have to see lads, but it could backfire. Goalkeepers were sometimes unable to make saves when shots were aimed close to them between their knees and head. Now this is actually quite an important one because I've noticed quite lately that a lot of goalkeepers will dive out of the way of the shot and they just have such weird animations when it's in these situations, when it's close to their knees, head or even close to them. I find it's the complete opposite to the start of the game. We couldn't score a goal at the start, but now we seem to score a goal every single shot we take. So I think this actually might change that up and, and balance it in a way where we're going to have to really get that angle for the shot that's going to enable us to finish in the corner. And I think that will increase the skill gap in a way or two. In some situations, goalkeepers were not making successful saves or shots 
that were within reachable distance. I mean, this, as it goes in with the previous pitch notes, I think it's important because goalkeepers literally can't save easy shots uh, at the moment. And I think this will hopefully uh, fix that problem. Many are saying that the over-the-top air through balls are not being patched. Lads, I beg to differ. EA have come out and they've said the defending player could unintentionally decelerate when chasing after an air ball. This was the common issue as to why those over-the-top through balls worked. Your player would slow down and then the attacker would be able to run in behind, get on the end of the ball and get a shot off. This was the common issue I found and I think this could actually contribute to fixing these over-the-top through balls or air balls and hopefully it may decrease the actual effectiveness of this. I think lads, the over-the-top through balls, they don't implement a skill gap. They're just too easy to perform and people are just spamming them. I do it myself because it works and uh, I think we need to find other ways that are more, uh, you know, inclined to increase the skill gap and EA, I think, have done this with this patch. However, we will have to see. But that will signal the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts on the patch coming in the next week or so and uh, we shall see how it turns or transforms FIFA 22 in the future uh, as always i'm doing tutorials on instagram and tiktok go and check them out links are in the description down below lads and we can keep in touch over there and also doing personal one-on-one -on -one coaching on patreon.com so the link for that is in the description down below we can work one-on-one -on -one and i can hopefully improve you in fever 22 but that is the end of the episode i hope you have a good one i'm out sayonara au revoir adios salam ciao and goodbye